So recently, I finally watched the original Mad Max movie. Now, I'm 42 years old, and normally that's a movie that most people my age have already gotten to at some point in time in their life. However, with my upbringing, I'm a little bit behind on some things. I'd seen Furiosa, and I'd seen Fury Road, and I was like, well, I need to go ahead and actually watch the original movie on this. So that's exactly what I did. I was kind of surprised because while this it's beginning is clearly the beginning of the apocalypse that the later movies are set in, who knew that the original movie basically started as a uh, it's a action tragic action love story basically is what I, is what I got out of it, at least the main plot line as we see the biker a uh, biker gang kill Max's girlfriend. <laughs> after he's done quit the police force. That one whole thing being the genesis of the start of basically what is now a movie, would say empire, but basically an epic movie series. Now, some of you might hear that and be like, what is, what is he talking about? Yeah, there's, you know, there's a little bit of love in it, but it's, it's this is a badass action movie. Well, I mean, it is, it very much is. And it has some very practical stunts that are done in this movie, whereas, as opposed to the epic nature of the explosions and things of that nature that we see in Fury Road and Furiosa, it's my I honestly think that the core of this movie is a love story between Max and Jesse and their child Sprague. We'll get to why I, I'm, I think that, you know, as evidenced by how the end plays out. And I haven't seen the Mad Max 2 or Beyond Thunderdome or something like that. I believe it's the third movie in the series. So I haven't seen those two. But... This being the genesis of the entire series, this being, this being what everything builds off of, I think the building block of it, and what sets Mad Max on his course, the death of his girlfriend. And I love the way the movie starts with a call coming in to the pursuit via, to the pursuit officers about the escape of a convict who has now killed a cop. Come on, Chad, a big bumper. Big bumper, got you here. What's going down? We got a cop killer. So, of course, that sets everything in motion. The convict having stolen a pursuit vehicle with his girlfriend after killing the cop. Uh, the main police force, two pursuit units, go racing after this man. And, of course, it's to no avail. They try their best, but one winds up with a broken leg. Another, well, he winds up with cuts to the, to the throat and a wrecked motorcycle, a wrecked pursuit vehicle. So of course we, this is where we first meet Max in his ep interceptor vehicle. <laughs> they is hauling ass too. Don't forget to lead them. Oh. They are not having any luck catching those criminals. We are 100% snafu. You okay? He goes after this night Rider and his girlfriend, and it, it doesn't end well for them as they, they die. Hey, oh, well, that didn't last very long. That his uh, intercepting didn't last very long. After the end of the criminal and his girlfriend in a fiery crash. We see Max back at the main police garage where he is shown a new vehicle that's been put together, a V8. And it's in the same series of, of events right here that we also see that uh, basically the main police have been, they've been given the okay to bribe Max with this car, this V8. At this point, he's already unsatisfied with police work and the dangers involved uh, therein. <laughs> And we see the guy that's on the motorcycle being Goose. We next see him and Max together as they come across a man running naked across the field and they're trying to figure out what's going on. And they, they, they happen to notice a completely torn apart car and a woman that's t uh, basically tied to it. And this man sitting in the in the seat that's normally would be in the back of this vehicle. And they stop. And they apprehend the man. And the poor girl, she is absolutely beside herself. And this man is part of a bicycle gang, the leader being Toe Cutter. It's 
they're not a very nice group whatsoever because as they rolled into town you could tell their their basic plan was to take it over and the reason why they're in town well because of the death of their buddy Knight Rider They're picking up that, that must Knight be your Rider friend fella. over there. That didn't leave much of him. Run! Hey! Okay. It's okay now. All right. It's all right. No one's going to hurt you. The man being picked up, being part of their gang, with the damage that was done to the girl, Goose very much did not care for this, and he took offense to it. I don't know if it took, took offense is the right word. More like it pissed him off. And we see him. We see them next within the police station itself, and the commissioners of the city apparently have come to like, yeah, you got to release them. You can't keep them. Uh, you can't harm another hair on this man's head. And Goose just about goes over the edge. Now this whole course of events right here with Goose and Max arresting the gang member Johnny, this all sets into motion what's what's to come very shortly after. Since we see the second in command of this biker gang, Bubba Zanetti, uh, showing up as Johnny is released, and Goose goes after him and gets a couple hits in before he's pulled off. Uh -oh. And Goose just, he's had his fill of it. We see him going to a nightclub and making googly eyes with the, with the singer that's in the club. And it's apparent that the very next scene that he has spent the night with this singer. And he actually goes and gets on his bike. Well, unfortunately, unbeknownst to him, his bike has been messed with by the gang. Uh, Zanetti and Toe Cutter and this group have messed with, messed with his bike. And winds up flipping the bike into a field. Luckily, a man in a truck rolls by and he borrows a man's truck, puts the puts the bike within the bed of the truck itself and he's headed back to Maine police now on the road the biker gang they wind up causing him to crash and since Johnny being the one who's actually caught and arrested and had to be freed after they no no doubt intimidated witnesses toe cutter tells him basically to throw flame to the leaking gasoline is coming from the truck while goose is still hanging in it and he's trying furiously to get out it does not go well it's not pretty for goose and the end result of this is actually max taking and going to the police chief and going i can't do this anymore i've got a i've got a girl and a kid and i'm just i'm done this time i know i've said it before so apparently he has quit multiple times oh shit Oh shit. Uh -oh. oh, that's not a way to go at all. That's it. That's it. My guy? No, not again. That's it. Which sits him and Jesse and Sprog on a cross country trip. Just enjoying life and enjoying each other and enjoying themselves. And I think this is one of the few times where one of the tropes of movies where you've got this where you've got a tragic story, a lot of times the impetus for a villain arc or a hero arc is them stopping what they're them taking and stopping everything, or turning their back on what they're doing, normally fighting fighting against evil in some form or fashion and taking and throwing it all away for family and normally that leads to an impetus of really either them taking and fighting evil with everything that's with them after a tragedy has occur occurred or them taking and becoming a villain themselves and we see them traveling the countryside and what should happen as they're stopping to get a tire well uh, the biker gang is down by the coast or down by the water just a little bit down the road from where they're stopping to take and get a, a tire replaced or a tire fixed. And Jesse takes Sprog for some ice cream. 
So Cutter and his gang are down there. And of course they start harassing her. And she takes and knees one of the she knees Toe Cutter in the nuts. And she beats feet back to Max and tells him, hop in the car, don't worry about the don't worry about the tire. And they go on their merry way. Though they go on their merry way in a very fast speed. So we've got Max and Jesse and Sprague now taking and basically running from this my motorcycle gang. They make it to the house of an elderly friend, and there Max does some does some mechanicing work on the vehicle, and Jesse decides she wants to go down to the beach, so her and the family dog take a trip down the beach through the woods. Unbeknownst to her, the motorcycle gang is lurking in the woods, and while she doesn't see any of them on the way down to the water, it's clear that the dog is definitely noticing something's awry. She's able to take, and she makes it down to the beach, and she does her sunbathing and looks like she takes a nap while she's on the beach and on the way back uh, that's when they start to show themselves and not only do they show themselves they start to chase her through the woods so she gets back and she tells Max of what's going on so Max grabs a shotgun and goes through the woods trying to find them well while he's in the woods trying to find them he hears a gunshot why because at this point we see that my motorcycle gang has actually found her and Sprague and May. May pulls a gun on them, forces them into her shed, shuts the door and locks it on them. But this is the flimsiest door because this being movies and well, things have to happen a certain way. What we see is them taking and breaking down the door after Jesse and May actually take and leave the farm itself with the vehicle. Now granted, Max has been working on this vehicle and it doesn't get very far down the road, so it's not long after they leave the farm that the car, that the vehicle breaks down, and the motorcycle gang catches up to them. And at this point, Jessie is running with Sprague in her arms down the road, and they run her and the child down. And it's at this point that Max has made it back to the farm and realizes, crap, they're gone, and goes beat feet down the road looking for his girlfriend and his son and it comes up on the scene and I'm just going for a nice little drive, eh? I'm doing vacation. Uh oh, yeah, something terrible's gonna happen. It's playing family man, getting a dog. Oh hell. I, I don't wanna wait ten years to tell you how I'm feeling about you right now. Do you know what? Yeah, it seems like she gets the gist there, homie. Get a lot of that. Yeah, we had a blowout a while back. Raunchy, very raunchy. How about this tire, huh? Have a 69 on. Yeah. I can sell you a set of lops for next to nothing. Sprogo has talked me into buying him an ice cream, so uh, I think I'll see you later. Uh oh. Uh, why don't I have a good feeling about this? Beautiful scenery, though. Beautiful. Oh, fuck no. Yep. Yeah. No bueno. Look what's turned up for Sunday dinner. Main course and dessert. Smart girl. Get the hell out of there. Run home, dude, over. Oh, yeah. Like I said, this is Jesus. Something always goes wrong. Menace Mike goes, I quit. Something fucks up. What do you do? Buy a new home? B&B? They tell me about the little beach down by the trees. Mm -hmm. You want to come? Oh, uh, don't wander off again. You know what happened last time. Like, but you know, women, they never learn. She's going for a hell of a hike, ain't she? Oh, shit. Uh-oh. Girl, you better get going. I'm taking too much damn time getting through them woods. I'll be sprinting. Be running and hollering. Get somebody's attention. Sound carries. Go, girl, go. What, what What the hell is wrong with you? 
It's the dog. Run, girl, run. Get back to your man. Where's the baby? Why Why does nobody care about the baby? That's my question. Get him inside. Bro, these people. Why have you, how's that baby survive? Well, well, it's our little mother. Stand back. Stay back. Man. Stay back. Get me. Get the van. Oh, that, it's not gonna hold them at all. That's, that's a flimsy wood door. And he's gonna leave you man like that. Where's the wherewithal with these people? Uh-oh. Oh, hell no. This is not gonna... This is not good. Run, girl, run. There's always something fucked up that happens to make a good guy that wants out of stuff to just go absolutely bonkers. As soon as he says, I'm out, it's like, oh, what's going to go wrong? And here we go. It fades to a doctor talking to a nurse at a hospital talking about she's in a coma, doesn't know if she'll take and come out of it, will take and tell him this. And he's sitting there listening to the whole thing. And it's at this point right here, it's after this point right here, that we see him back at him and his girlfriend's house. And he's sitting there in a the swinging chair, almost like a, a wicker type swinging chair, in front of what looks like to be the ocean. And he's sitting there and he's crying. He's very clearly upset. And it spurs him to take and go inside the house and pull out the leathers and all of his old, and his police gear. And from there, we see him actually go back to the main police station and get in the V8. And then he goes after the biker gang. So the impetus of Jesse right here, we've got, we've seen at this point in time, after he's quit the force, him and Jesse go on this nice little jaunt. And them running her down, well, now we're getting a not so nice Max. So as I said, this is very much a love, tragic love story, but it's an action movie all wrapped around each other. And he goes completely badass and takes out the biker gang himself. And granted, he gets shot in the leg, uh, but he takes out Toe Cutter. He takes out Bubba. And finally, he comes up on Johnny, who is trying to... He, he's messing with a vehicle that he's calls to flip. And he actually handcuffs Jesse to the bumper from his leg at his ankle. To the bumper and tells them hey you can either saw through the chain or you can saw through your leg but i take and give it you've got at least you've got maybe two minutes before this thing goes up and as he drives away we see the explosion and that's the end of the first movie you say, oh, you? yeah sure we got all the science back last night Don't be okay. Don't be okay. Don't be okay. Oh, shoot. Oh, he's gonna take the car. Hey! You asshole! What the molly fuck you think you're doing? I mean, they'll kill me, won't they? Oh, oh, oh! Um, now nah, he's gonna be willing to cross any line. If you say yes or no, Night Rider, are they coming back? I don't know, they gotta get the punch. See, this is Tropic Thunder. Never go full retard. He, he's, he's about to full send retard. Like, but in a very much a vengeance is mine, saith the Lord and I am the Lord type of way. Like he is, oh, Jesus Christ. He was living his best life. But like I said, the minute somebody goes in these movies, they go, I'm out, I'm done with this stuff. <sighs> Shit just goes belly up really, really quick. And it went, but they had a good run. I mean, you got to give them that. They had a good run. It is very much a... Uh, has went from a love story to uh, we about to see some revenge, I think. 
And those bikes, as fast as they are, they're not going to outrun that V8 he got. Because it's got the V8, turbo, and nitro. Or nitrous. Oh, he, he's playing games, eh? Alright, follow me. Boy, he is hauling ass, too. Oh, they got nowhere to go. Calling cards, eh? Yeah, you ain't out running that, homie. Dude, they just watch him. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa. Prohibited area. Okay. Why is it prohibited? <laughs> Dying. That's what you're doing, apparently. You ain't got one leg and still getting up. That look of determination in his face is just... Listen, will you listen to me? Hell of a crazy people back there, man. You could hack through your ankle in five minutes. And just drives away. Oh, I wonder if he made it. Now, this movie being set in a time when civilization is breaking down uh, it'd be understandable taking and seeing nothing but violence all the time because it starts off with the death of a police officer and them chasing this villain and this villain dying themselves upon being chased and crashing in uh, into a fuel truck and it just explodes right so this is we this is definitely it's easy to see why it'd be tiring and we're very early on introduced to Jesse and Sprague. So that love element right there and the way that he just gives up being a police after he sees one of his, his best friends on the force goose being charred almost to death. Cause when he, he pulled that, that blanket back as the air machine is feeding, you know, basically feeding air into his lungs and he sees what's beneath that sheet. He just cannot take it. He can't believe that that is goose, but he's seen enough at this point as an impetus for him going, I can't do this anymore. So he's trying to take and live his best life. And this is what we see time and time again. in a lot of these movies, the show, these either anti-heroes or these, these, these characters that live on these, that wind up on these morally gray areas and it's oftentimes a tragedy that happens, and it happens to be the running down and the killing of his child and putting his girlfriend in a coma, basically making her a vegetable. Outstanding movie. Absolutely outstanding movie. I regret that I have not seen I had not seen it up to this point. I can't wait to get into a Mad Max 2 and Beyond Thunderdome because then I'll be, able, I'll be able to take and say I've seen the whole series. I liked Fury Road and I liked Furiosa. I think the dichotomy that what we what we see or what we're at now in the series and how the wasteland looks with all the sand juxtaposed the first movie where everything is still green. Society, there is still vestiges of a normal society. It's breaking down. It's very much hanging by a thread. But it's trying to hold on. So, when that little bit of society is no longer enough because, well, the, the overwhelming crime has took and made its way to him personally, flips that switch. I cannot wait to get into the rest of this series. Hope you enjoyed this review. Be good to each other. Love yourselves. Peace.